very good evening and today we're looking at a bush radio this was made in 1964 in england and according to the manufacturer it's a seven tube including the rectifier ac dc super heterodyne three wave band radio because this is an ac dc set this has the possibility of having a live chassis danger danger most of the time that isn't an issue in the UK because all our mains plugs are polarised. But you never know who's wired this up. They might have wired it backwards. The colouring in the mains cord may be identical both sides. So you just put the two wires to, to one terminal and the other and it will work. It's only when you have to take these things apart that you have to be a little bit more careful. Rather than waffle, let's get on with it and see what it looks like inside. Okay, to take this thing to bits, there are several ways of doing it. One's with a hammer, the other is to do it the way the manufacturer says. And there's a third way. Now, the manufacturer says, take the back panel off, take the screws out, take it apart. The early versions of the trader manuals actually say to lay it on its front and take it apart. So I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to lay it on its front, like so. I'm going to get the Phillips screwdriver and... On the back of there is your wire FM dipole. So that's all nice and straightforward on a plug designed to go straight into the VHF antenna socket. We have a three-way filter cap here, and I'm just looking around it to see if there are any date codings on it. Nothing immediately obvious, but that doesn't mean to say that they're not there. But apart from a couple of uh, spidered friends and some dust, there doesn't look to be anything really awful inside here there's certainly not a lot of dirt on the chassis there's this dirt on the valves and that's that's to be expected with the high voltage now this is the output transformer here there is no mains input transformer because this is a an ac dc set and this winding here is actually a low impedance separate winding to output to a tape recorder so what else have we got in here? Well, apart from some what look like uh, standard looking components, here's the on off volume switch. The tuning is here. Um, the cord is intact. This is the FM unit here. You have one tube there for the FM UF89. So these are well, let's have a quick look. They're all mullard tubes. So I've got a feeling that these are the original tubes supplied with the set. Uh, there's nothing obviously gone milky at this point, but that doesn't mean to say everything's good. Now to take the chassis out, what we have to do is undo the four, sorry, the five fixing screws, which are actually detailed in the instructions which I did get a copy from my manuals. And there's, if we look at this, so let's turn it round to match the, the diagram. There's this one here. There's one at the back down there. There's one there, one there, and one in the middle. But first it also tells you to take out the press pan heat deflector outwards from the top of the inside of the cabinet. So that is press pan. Okay, let's put that to one side as well. Then we undo the screws and pop it out of its box. Just to tilt that like that. 
round like that so that you can get the glass face plate out. And the speaker itself is on terminals there so that you can actually lift it completely away from the chassis. So let me just stand it like that for a moment and give you a look of the bare inside of the case. Now obviously this plastic can come off, the speaker itself could come out if need be. I'm going to uh, test the speaker. Uh, it looks like it has some corrosion on those connectors but not a great deal. But it, it's a standard speaker as opposed to a separate coil so it's a standard dynamic speaker so it's not like we're dealing with high voltage on the speaker system there is an awful lot of dust in the bottom of the the cabinet so we'll blow that out and give that a clean up as i say i may well take this cabinet a little bit apart because we do have a little bit of give there where it's started to come apart. I might uh, glue that back together and see if we can uh, refinish this somewhat. But that will be for a later video. So what we have here is a standard radio chassis basically with um, these little polyester caps should not have an issue at all. Uh, there seems to be the just the one electrolytic which is the main filter cap here. This one is wax coated. I may well just replace that one at the same time. Uh, that resistor there, it's, it's got some sort of waxy stuff on it and I'm not too impressed with that. Obviously these switches here for the band change will need cleaning out. These, um, these capacitors may again, they may need cleaning out in some sort of form. But yeah, I think a, a quick dose of compressed air will sort a lot of that out. But before we do that, let's do the basic checks and see that uh, everything is uh, as it should be. And I'm just gonna look at the on off switch to start with, which is here. And again, looks pretty much original. You've got a voltage adjustment here between 230 and 250 volts, depending on where the set is likely to be used so that you can reduce the voltage to the valve series filaments. Now it's showing three, three mega ohms, which is probably around about the right sort of value because the tubes are cold. They're not warmed up, so the, the resistance on on these filaments will all be fairly high. Let's also check which side is going to the chassis. And it is the neutral side, the black side. So because we've got a color coded switch and a color coded mains cord, let's just have a quick look inside the mains plug. that it is actually wired correctly, and it is. You have the red wire going to the fuse, and you have the black wire going to the neutral side. So it is actually wired safely. It's one of those things you can never take a chance with. You, you have to test it. So let's also test the operation of the switch. So at the moment it's switched off, we should get no continuity, and we don't. Let's switch it on and see whether we get any sort of continuity there, and we don't. So live, so that's the neutral side. So the mains cord is good there. The mains cord is good there. The live side is open and the neutral side is open. Just operate the switch a few times. 
to see if we can clear any muck off it. So I'm going to have to look for a new switch if I can't repair this one. So I think that's probably good enough for a first look. I think we're going to leave it there. The next time you see this set, I will have given it a good blow over with the compressed air, taken a lot of the dirt off and started to basically tidy it up a bit. With that, I'm going to say stick around for the rest of the series. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Have a look at the video up here on the IM13 vacuum tube voltmeter that I just went through a test and calibration of. Or down here, down there, YouTube will choose something for you and hopefully you'll enjoy that. See you next time for part two of the Bush VHF81 radio. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.